There's no narrative without words. So you have two words. One, your name. That's the amen. And the knowledge around this is hidden, but I'm going to reveal it. Then you have two. This is your macrocosmic positioning. That's your other name. This means that you have two different personalities. You have the microcosmic personality contained within this star vehicle, and you have the macro and, and goes by a name. This is the whole procedure in the beginning where the God dog asked for Adam to name all of the beings. So the structure of the matrix is based on names, okay? And these names, when they're called, they are actually energies within the matrix. So even if I'm called James, James is something in the matrix. The following clip is exclusive content from the university. Access over 300 videos and 26 courses with advanced metaphysics on demand. Jump in live chats with Savan and the rest of the tribe. New materials are available monthly along with guides and regiments. Subscribe today and save $25 off your first month membership. Links are in the descriptions. Subscribe to Secret Energy TV or this channel for future show notifications. The question is, if there is, and I know for sure there is other life forms and they are also on some something different, what would they be on? Would their passions and would their traits stem them into some of the basics and core functions that we have or some of the the uh, desires and ideas that we have, except for at a different magnitude? Could it be also because while the body is most excellent, it produces limitations to the spirit or the soul? Could it be in itself some type of regulator and something that is not uh, held by a body? Would it be absolved from those regulations? So these are the questions that we're going to begin to answer in this deep dive of going into looking at one card, one card in a deck. And in this deck, we're speaking of like not only modern playing cards, but we're speaking of tarot. But more importantly, we're actually talking about the game. Because that is the core root fundamental of all of these systems is that it stems into a game, okay? So now, this game is, let me look at my note here, is the world, is the world there? Okay, so we're, we're, moving, in, we're moving in a pace here. Okay, so the, the divination and the predicting of the future versus guiding the future, okay? So remember I said already that, okay, so let's imagine there's advanced intelligence, but advanced intelligence is still bent in certain ways by the maxims of some of our ideals. While we're limited, like in the small body with the small animals and things, there are un more, more wilder or unhindered beings, but they have these stronger passions. But these passions would still uh, center around things such as prediction, i.e. knowing the future or guiding the future and making the future. See, because when you get into advanced intelligence, you're no longer letting like time act on you. You're basically creating time. And in this way, you're actually creating purpose. You're creating your next thing and the thing that you want to do. You have it all figured out. You don't necessarily have something saying, hey, this is what you're doing. This is what you're going to do for me. You follow behind me. That's all microcosm stuff. Macrocosm is responsible consistently for consistently going on with the newness and what it wants to do. So let's just see the playing field as it is that we have something else on the outside that is basically the it thing. And then something on the inside that is kind of pegged to the it thing and functions with some of the mechanics of the it thing, but also in itself because it's mini miniaturized, it's 
highly manipulable because now that it's miniaturized or now that it has been made smaller, it can, it's like taming a beast. It's like something that first couldn't be controlled, like a planet, like who's going to control the sun? But then if you get a miniaturized sun, now you can kind of put it under control and put it into to, to, uh, to a greater level of being manipulated. See? So let's just say then that still in the higher advanced intelligence, you want to consistently put the pieces together of what you want to happen next. Versus in the lower states of intelligence, you're trying to divine a way to figure out what's going to happen next. So this is where you open the door on humanity, like in this day and age, as far as spirituality and occultism. You find them with a myriad of divination tools to tell them more about themselves and to tell them more about the future. OK, so some of these tools would just speak of the ones that we know of are like enology or joyous numerology, where it gives you a uh, top down of who who your personality or archetype is. And you will look at it and you will see a 70, sometimes an 80 percent accuracy. And even that 20 percent that you're off or you think it's off is only within the influence and traits of the other numbers that have been acting on you and also your name. So if you really knew the system, you would see that it was even a little bit over 100% accurate because it's eerie in a way that it's like 101% accurate. And then that way, things become predictable. You can kind of predict what certain people are going to do when they get together. You can kind of predict what's going to happen with you in certain situations. All you have to do is look at the numbers and look at the traits, and then you can even predict... Um, what is like a uh, no tolerance zone for a person or what can consistently float their boat if you were really into it. OK, so we're just saying that there are systems that are designed for macro uh, for, for microcosmic use. This means small use. Let me predict my own future. OK, now. We'll examine one of those systems from a logical level to try to figure out where is the power component here. Because nothing is just poof. There is some real mechanics going on behind the scenes. So when we think of something like tarot, we have here a deck of cards. Let's say it was purchased off of Amazon. And then we have maybe a traditional set like an AE weight or something of those caliper, like the old school decks, or maybe something new that corresponds to those same magician, the hermit, etc. Right. So now here I am in front of somebody and they're telling me that they're going to read my future through these cards. And what they want me to do is, you know, cut the cards. Where is the power component here would be like as a real occultist. I'm asking that. So let's break down where maybe some of the power components could be. Maybe it could be in the, the actual pictures that are on the card. But let's say the person did all original art. So surely that can't be holding up as much energy as something arcane, like something from a long time ago. Okay, maybe it's the paper. Well, this paper is from Walmart. So maybe in the old times, there were like certain systems or certain cards that were like made out of something different. And you could use those to really tell the future because maybe they had like some kind of uh, uh, like they were crafted, like how you would craft a talisman where you make the paper and you draw the sigil and this kind of thing. Maybe. OK, so we're still in the maybe zone here. But who has one of those? But you can say People that generally divine with cards generally work with one deck for a long time, or it's like that deck becomes their deck. So we can say in certain ways that probably the old school sorceress or sorcerer had a, a deck that was completely charged, right? And that those cards and how they flipped it, that those cards would be accurate because they had to kind of magnetize that card. And we're still in the if zone, Okay. Or we can choose to look at that, and let me just walk through this very slowly. 
we can then look at and and so so what I okay so what I pointed out here is is that just from a level of occultism this is the only way that technically these cards can have a magical power is either through something with their paintings or drawings something with the kind of actual material that they've been drawn on or the person themselves and their ability to uh, to like electromagnetically or magne ma magnetically charge something so that it can pick up something from the field, et cetera. But all the time that I'm going through this in my mind, I'm thinking this is still a horrible medium for accomplishing whatever you're looking to accomplish with this divination process. Right away, my, my consciousness was like, this couldn't have been the first system. Could there have been a system earlier than tarot seven so this is where i was taken on the journey the first thing that i'm going to show you i'm going to show you some images here now this isn't my notes is in this order right and this order is not a real order but somehow it's working so i'm just going to keep going with it until it doesn't all right so let's just make sure we dial into this microcosm versus the macrocosm so you get that so when we move on from here, you, you can kind of understand what's going on. We're going to basically put down the map. Okay, now the first thing that I'm going to show here is this chart, okay? And this chart is an old indigenous chart, as you can see, that shows that potentially there is a correspondence to every animal within the human body. So that the human body, according to this mythos, was put together through a series of different types of animals, quote unquote, if you may. Some of them we do not recognize anymore, but that the human being as we know it is some kind of composite being. And this composite being, though, is referred to as the microcosm. Let's look at it again, because many that don't understand these principles, because earlier in the time that I was going through occultism, when they started talking about the microcosm, macrocosm stuff, I was I was gone right away. I was like, oh, they got the Crowley stuff. I'm out of here. Right. And I, of course, you know, I, I knew it a little bit, but it just it's almost like one of those terms where it just reeks like, OK, he's trying to be proper microcosm, macrocosm gone. That can't be the truth. Right. So, again, driving back around just to understand the connection between the microcosm and the pentagram. You need to see this connection. It says from the Greek micros, small, a cosmos, a world, a little world of the human being as distinct from the macrocosm, a greater world, a universe. This relationship between the microcosm and the macrocosm has preoccupied philosophers for many centuries with the microcosm believed to be Symbolize in the microcosm. According to some occultists, the microcosm was itself symbolized by the pentagram or a pentacle or a five pointed star believed to represent humanity and the summation of the occult forces. Okay? So that's one of those things. It's like, okay, check. We have a relationship between the macrocosm and the, and the pentacle or the pentagram. Now it's also very easy to see that this relationship does come from how the star itself does look like a human being with the arms spread out, okay? And oftentimes like in Stone Mountain, I saw these statues that they had or pictures that they had because they had these men working in Stone Mountain but they also were all like in some kind of secret society. So when they were standing all out there taking pictures, they all were purposely standing out there like they were pentagrams. Now, also, I've come to recognize that the pentagram is also known as Jack. And the proof of this, as we'll see consistently today, is in things like we have. And let me see why my screens are interchanging. Give me one quick second. Oh, I see what's happening here. I should be on the second line. Give me one quick second. Let me move uh, my imagery to the second line, and then I'll also just uh, keep um, some things in alignment here and what we've already come to understand because we're going to go through a step-by-step -step process, and it's going to be undeniable. But anytime you would get only a part of this knowledge, which is always the game, literally, 
then a person is not going to be able to peep out what's going on at all. And I believe that the game never ends for a person. Like if you don't figure out what I'm going to be talking about today, it's really going to be like these consistent lives where it's like something is playing a game or trick on you because you don't really have your memories. So watch how this is, 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 is coming about. So we now been able to identify again, the, the microcosm. So they're saying that the planet, because the bodies are the everything is like in in this this uh um what you would say is holographic template right but this template specifically that we're talking about is this pentagram or five pointed star we're saying that when it gets at this stage in the human when we when we get to this stage in the human body that this is the symbol that's used to represent that stage it's also the symbol that's used to represent the entire world now, if you know anything about geometry, you also know the pentagram is phi. And phi, of course, is that the, the Visica Pisces and all of that rolls into that. So, but I just want you to specifically focus on, again, this symbolism of the pentagram because the Visica Pisces is a feminine symbol. The jack or the pentagram is actually a masculine symbol. And we're going to see this here in a moment because Technically, the creations of the bodies is the real creation of man, okay? Because man is also another word for the pentagram, but let's keep going. So we find here an occult chart that I actually can no longer find anywhere. I find variants, but not this one specifically. And this one shows not only that microcosmic, macrocosmic relationship, but it also makes a point to show you that the genitalia of the male is a pentagram, okay? And what this is about is, is that, remember how we were talking about like the jackal having his own creative component or his own womb? A lot of times we think of the womb of the woman and it, its creation, but we also have a tendency not to look at the male's creation process too because he's got to have a creation process too so in a world that or what you would say is a man's world most of the creation comes forth from this meaning that the energy that that world starts to take on starts to be more of the masculine aspects of the sexual force it's also clear to see from this diagram and we won't reach any further here but you can see the six above the five if you're looking closely, which is the six is the, the macrocosm and the five is the microcosm in occultism. But here they're even making sure that you see it on the diagram if you know what you're seeing and you see that spiral and it looks like a six and it's sitting in, then I guess that would be the intestines or the bowels and it's sitting above the five or the pentagram. And this is very important because you'll come to discover that the six or the macrocosm is also in itself run like the matrix is run. It's like the father of the matrix, okay? Now, let me show you a little bit more about the father of the matrix because in these matrices, when I say matrices, I'm talking about worlds within worlds. I'm talking about worlds that are in themselves designed in the same mechanics as the world outside of it, but it's under a different dominion. So just like you see that we have this consistent, well, we're inside of a world, then you have a nation, then you have a tribe or a village, and then you have a city, or then you have a, and you have this all the way to get back to the person's house, and then you go all the, all the way down to the cell, and then you can keep going down, but it looks like it's just like everything is just consistently encapsulated. So this is that same aspects of things that, these world creators, if you may, and you are one of them, but those ancient ones, the ones that I'm saying that we still sometimes don't even know that we're living on the same projection as they're living, that they could create worlds and, can, and people were immersing in those worlds. But in the ancient times, it was all, a lot of the beings knew this is how it was all designed, this knowledge of, of how there was like infinite worlds or you could build a world inside of a world 
and that even that the worlds were under some management system that was all known in the ancient times. That's what they were initiating you into, i.e., or teaching you is understanding like how this is working, right? But every time one is created, though, they can change the mechanics of how it functions. And I'm going to show you tonight how they changed the system from being how it was utilized within, we would say, Kemet or within the 360 degree system, which traces back to Egypt. Versus when the entry of the 365 system, the extra five, which you're going to see a lot in this whole trickery that begins to happen, this extra five that then gets added into the system and it changes the game, literally. Okay, so again, let's let's talk about some more cognizance of the five and the six or the microcosm and the macrocosm, just so we become very clear of how that will play out in our lives. So you'll come to learn tonight how that number five and the jackal, as some already know here from the previous recordings, connect directly to Hermes, who connects to Thoth. And so in that relationship, you'll see that words also become a big part of all of this. Like, there is no narrative without words. I'll say that again. There is no narrative without words. You cannot talk into your mind without words. So you need to understand right away the power of words and the power of spells. I'll say that again. There's no narrative without words. So you have two words. One, your name. That's the amen. And the knowledge around this is hidden, but I'm going to reveal it. Then you have two. This is your macrocosmic positioning. That's your other name. This means that you have two different personalities. You have the microcosmic personality contained within this star vehicle, and you have the macro, and, and goes by a name. This is the whole procedure in the beginning where the God dog asked for Adam to name all of the beings. So the structure of the matrix is based on names, okay? And these names, when they're called, they are actually energies within the matrix. So even if I'm called James, James is something in the matrix, Jessica, Francini, Jeanette, Destin, all of these are beings in the matrix, characters in the matrix, okay? So how many times can you say that you've seen many people be able to even live in their macrocosmic identity without their microcosmic energy basically overriding them. So what I'm saying is, is that people more of living in their ID or their name and their physical experience versus the macrocosmic cosmic positioning and what that tells them they are. Because in most cases, they don't have really even an accurate system because this is the stuff that you would really want to hide. Because unlike the person who is using the divination cards to predict their future, the real art architect, if you may, or the player is actually using the knows that each person or each jack or each phi or each card already has an identity and just plays those cards based on the sequence that it wants to see happening next. So you see the difference? One is looking to read the cards like they're on one side of the mirror trying to predict the future, while one is on the other side of the mirror using all the cards in, in the game to actually create the future. So it's creating the spread or creating the, the deck, okay? So watch this. Like, this is wild. Like, when I, now, mind you, <laughs> I know a lot of stuff. But, man, when this was coming together, I was like, all right, let me sit down. <laughs> because it was undeniable. And I think it's because, personally, if you ask me why, it's because somebody named me James. And because I was naturally going to figure out, like, everything about my macrocosmic self, 
but I had to go through my micro cosmic self, I ended up figuring out what James Evans Bomar is. And then also being able to do that from the other side of the glass and then seeing also how there were others being casted in that card and then actually seeing the whole deck and like, oh, snap. If there's anything that you learn from me here tonight is that study yourself. Because if you study yourself, you will. this is the way that you, because you, you're the map. You're going to see here in a moment that you're actually the map. So this gets so mystical because you've literally left yourself clues. The real adventure is happening, just like they be playing around on TV with. But let's keep going. So we understand, again, look, it's even, look, this, I just got to even show that on the site that we were looking at, just to show you the synchronicity of what we're saying. Let me see, where's my movie mirror? Here it is right here, okay. So this is the encyclopedia, what we were reading about the microcosm and the macrocosm. It's in science, encyclopedias, almanacs, transcripts, and then maps, okay? So just to see how they file it in the matrix because they know about this in the matrix, Everything that they're doing is based on this system, the system of Jack. Now watch this. Now in this game, we find that, and this is, okay, so what we're looking at then, and this is legalese, right? Like this is probably the continuation of the cosmic law. This is the glossary of the game terms, okay? Let me put this link across. And I'm going to show why. I ended up coming to this <laughs> because first of all, I took a step back and I was like, okay, cause it was still talking to me and it was like, okay, remember I told you Hermes, he's a trickster God. Don't forget this. This is the Joker or the fool or the jester. Okay. It's a trickster God. And what these beings do and what they've designed is a game that they can trick a person out of everything. So first of all, there is a bigger game, a high table, if you may. And let me just explain that very quickly. Uh, um, there is a macrocosm for real, right? Bigger players, celestial beings, you're one of them. And you're also in the collective. This one is like... The one that you're in right now is like a theft from the one that you are. It's like they stole a baby of you <laughs> and then put you in a micro earth through a series of tricks and games and spells that they play on beings from the cosmos all the time. So they already have been ID. And if you understand again how... This is design, and we explained it before, but for somebody that's just listening to this recording, you have to now see that the ocean or this large body of water that we have here functions as a mirror. It is the smoky mirror. It is the obsidian. Because at night, the ocean water is like black glass. And then the moon, which you'll see, plays all the components of languages, subconscious mind, and narrative projects a person's consciousness onto the waters. Now, we are actually in the stars, if you may. That's not necessarily up. It's more of like, that's what I'm saying about time. It's more of like everywhere. So we're in the stars. So we're shining. But our shine gets captured by the deep. And the deep incubates that shine. It will take that seed of light and then it will start growing it and forming it. And this is life in worlds. So the original 360 degree is kind of like more of that. I think they call that the Dendara, right? Calendar, where it's like all of these celestial bodies and beings, and then they're all being held up and they're all kind of holding up each other. And this is like the original matrix. It works in a perfect circle and it is in itself perpetual. We would see that as the Om, okay, or the Taurus. We talked about this before, but
but we'll have it up here on the screen just for visualization. This is what is surrounding everything. So in this way, everything is actually going on inside of this. So even these other geometries like the pentagram is going on inside of this. And that's always important to know because if you get it confused and you get tricked, you will actually think that you basically are the small version because that's the trick. The trick is to make you think that you're the pentagram only and that is your only identity. That's like they're trying to convince everybody here that we're only bodies and we don't actually have any other identity. And they enforce that, right? Like even in church and all these other institutions, you would be better off going to uh, one of them flower power festivals to truly know divinity than to walk inside of any religion. Like it was even the other day, I was say had populated my feed with a psych substance video and he was out there doing an interview with them, them folks at this festival. And boy, that's where I do most of my research at. Meaning all the folks that be taking them substances, they be like, he was asking them, like, what was the worst experience that they ever had? And right then you was able to actually map out the entire netherworld just from where they had gone. And then the ones that was and then he also asked them, what was the best one? And you was able to actually map out heaven from what they said, because they have been there, because it's all a part of this whole chemical state of consciousness. Right. But few have ever even these days been in that state. Right. This is like it still makes up a very small percentage of people who even go on those kind of journeys. And again, I'm not encouraging you to do that. You can actually do that with your breath and naturally. But I'm also not discouraging the situation because I also had taken a journey and I was flabbergasted at what I was seeing, meaning that I was like, damn, I guess <laughs> I guess there's a third eye. I can, now we're at that point where there's going to be no going back of thinking there's no third eye. And that's a big impact on life. So now let me let me just keep going with this, because. You have to understand how this is all designed because you need to understand that you cannot come through this with hatred, anger, or envy because you're going to be hating yourself. You're actually going to be hating the body and the environment that you're living in, and that's not going to work out. I'm telling you from experience. I probably burned off literally an entire life doing that, running down some battlefield somewhere you know, fighting some battle for something, right? So the reality here is, is that we're going to have to do this truly with love, right? Which is the Taurus. And that's just a perspective that you're around this so you can contain it. This is why they show the mother with child, right? Her son, because that's why I was saying there is no father in that dynamic do you see because they try to they try to introduce a father god in these new traditions notice how they even peep it out peep it out like because christianity is like the culprit here now they literally tell you in the new testament that the son has taken the position of the father right that there's now no need for the father anymore so what you're witnessing literally is you're witnessing how jack as i'll show you here in a moment has replaced the king, meaning that there is no need for a king on the dimension anymore. There, now, the dimension doesn't have a god. Like, look in the deck of cards. The, there is no god card. You see what I mean? So these, this all means something. So let me slow down here. <laughs> let me just let me bring it back in. Let me bring it back in. So we were talking about what can make the deck of cards so powerful and why were people using it for divination? And what I came across was an actual original game. I first came across it by checking out this game that I remember called Jax. Okay, everybody remember Jax? Anybody old enough to remember Jax, right? You see that thing on the bottom right there? That's called a Jack, right? And it looks like it's five sides, right? It's got the four, then the five, but then it's got another point on the side because this is like either an X or it's a pentagram, right? But this game actually used to be called Knucklebones, okay? 
Hold on to your hat. So it turns out that the first game was to take the heel of an animal. Let me show you the specific part. It's like your ain't where your ankle is, the talus bone. So they would take the talus bone, which I believe is where they get this word talisman from. They would take the talus bone and then they would use it like dice, like this. And they would toss the bone and this was like the first game. And in this process, you could win or lose. And this came to be known as a trick-taking game. Okay? And a trick-taking game is basically like a game that starts being played where when you when you when you somebody basically loses, it means that they've been tricked. And when you take a card, you've tricked someone. Now, right away, this starts getting very close right away to this trick or treat kind of thing. And the feature in the trick or treat is the Jack O'Lantern. Okay? Understand what I'm saying? Now, watch how we're able to still follow this story because what we're going to go through here is, is that you're going to see how the body is used in an occult way. And why it's associated with the pentagram and all of this moving and controlling and manipulation and abuse and all this kind of stuff and spiritual limitations and witchcraft and all this, you know, controlling a human being with magical spells and all this kind of stuff. But all this being a product of staying inside of the microcosmic mind, if you may, and not being aware of the macrocosm and them kind of tricking you into believing that there's only a macrocosm or excuse me, a microcosm. So let's go further. So as I said, then when I started doing more research and realized how cards and tarot begin to play into knuckle bones, <laughs> what I realized is, is that the tarot was basically like the most polished version of reality control. And these games were not just the ones that you see today where they're laying out cards in front of you. Also, some of these games had different sequences of cards. And I'm not going to spend the time now because it's obviously thick. But you can notice already that this is something that somebody has already created and put a lot of time in. And all of this is occult terms. To bluff, to blind, to bind, a bower, a bait, to batch, a base, a call, a card, a chip, or claim, a contract. You see, all of this is really what's going on underneath the hood also of the system of law. Because the law was a game in the beginning. It was a joke. And this is why we were talking about Saguni. Saguni was like a prototype that the Hindus were explaining. And they were saying that Saguni, who is the jackal. See, it, it, the thing is, is that if you, if you don't understand what's happening here, it's almost like a sleight of hand. Because in one way, we're talking about the body that we're in and the things that it can do and the things that it does and the things that it can, it can succumb to. Because it's almost like if it, if, you, if it can do it to you, if you can do it to someone else, it can be done to you. It's all like fair game. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like it's like once you enter into the game, just because you don't know the rules of the game, it doesn't mean that you can't lose. And entering into the game only takes for you to have a card. Look, the dummy. A hand dealt an imaginary, imaginary extra player and often played out according to certain rules. You see what I mean? So it's like, if you don't know how to play the game, but you enter the game, now the joke's on you. And this is what we need to be on point with because we entered into a game and there's another player and this player was way more skilled. Let me show you. 
Because it turns out that the jackal for sure is only serving his mother. Now, when we think of this, we got to think about like, again, the human bodies, they are in themselves. Like if you, if you were a star and you came star force, right. And you came into a human body. Now you're presented with all of these temptations. Okay. You're presented with basically a game or a hand. Let me show you exactly how they felt about this in the Renaissance era on why they couldn't even perceive that it was backwards for a person to be turned into an animal again. Watch this. Give me a moment. Okay. Early philosophical questionings. Okay, so here we go. Let me just go to the page here. It's in here, but I just screenshot it. Early philosophical questions were ra also raised about whether, okay, listen to this. Okay, so let me give you the background here. So Circe is the root to the word sorcerer, or in this case, sorceress, because every time we're looking at the male in the physical matrix, we always need to understand that the male is like a guard. They're designed to actually block and shield the queen. And as we have gone and tumbled down the stairs of existence, it's like instead of higher selves, we're getting lower selves. Okay? So the rulers of the lower worlds are lower selves or the lower hebdomad. And in this case, Cersei is like the epitome of like everything that a woman should not be when you read her story. Like when men don't like her, she turns them into pigs. When she sees women that are more beautiful than her, she poisons them. Her whole story is riddled with this kind of activity. And also when you're reading these stories because they're Greco, meaning they've been Greco, they're Greco, they're Greek eyes versions of Egyptian stories. They are, definitely designed to throw you completely off because this then gets into a story about different people who you can't really match their names and legends that just sound fanciful. And so the Greek traditions are designed to, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to read this book in Greek and you need to understand how Greek connects to Hebrew. And then you need to decipher what it's saying in the book, because this is all a heavy secret society. This is the city sitting under Italy which is where a lot of this comes from. This is like not the stuff that this, what they're talking about, they would love to make you confused as much as possible about this. And that's what the Greeks were able to accomplish. But they also, if you see what's happening, give enough of the clues to get you to see exactly what's going on, right? So in Circe's world, she stays on this island, island mountain out in Italy, according to the mythos. And this is the time where gods and men are also on the earth. But in this case, Circe is like, she holds a position of like the daughter of the sun god. And in this, she has certain powers. And the reason why I highlight her is because she seems to be almost like a perfect fit for the debased jackal's mother's energy. And in this case, like I said, she has this thing that she does to men sometimes and just she becomes almost like a nemesis or harbinger. She also has this thing about turning humans into animals and then making them stay in that animal form for the rest of their existence. This concept, look at this. It says early philosophical questions were also raised about whether the change from being a human endowed with reason to being an unreasoning beast might not be preferable after all. After the resulting debate was to have a powerful impact during the Renaissance. Circe was also taken as the archetypical predatory female. So what they're saying is, is that as you're seeing in the Renaissance, they reach, they reach high level bacchanalia at that stage. Like it's all orgies and acting like an animal basically. And it's getting to a point where when people say, 
hey, um, if, if you become an animal next and you're a human now, is that going up or is that going down? And this becomes an argument. And many argue that going down into becoming a wild animal is better than going up to become a senti- maybe more a sentient being, right? So you're in an atmosphere where basically the highest animalistic level of mankind is festering in this nucleus. And in this nucleus, man is debased. And when we say man, we're saying all physical beings are debased into their animalistic traits. And so in this way, when you observe what's happening here, Circe becomes the circle. The jackal becomes the pentagram. So anytime they draw a circle in a pentagram, they're drawing Circe and they're drawing the jackal. But remember, the Circe and the jackal are an as below version of this higher side of things. But but you're in the miniaturized mirror mirrored spell like hypnosis world you see what i mean because you just just out of sheer not being aware of this you're inside of the pentagram but the pentagram is like you know it's the wheel of life so you're kind of like rolling like this cog or a spoke that's actually what it is it's a spoke it's not a wheel the wheel is the circle okay the spoke which again, the spoke is connected to words, speaking, the spoke. It fills the center of the circle, okay? It's the evocation to think. Now, let me show you where this comes from because it's Thoth. Now, Thoth also is a baboon. And it turns out that a baboon is actually a dog, A baboon is a jackal. It's just something that they missed. Look at how, I just want a still picture here. Look at how, as you see in this picture, do you see the teeth on this baboon? Okay. So let me show you, this is, this is showing you when they created the body, this one, Jack, They use the moon key. They use the monkey for real because the monkey is Thoth. The monkey is language. The monkey is the subconscious. The monkey or the baboon is the jackal in the matrix. This is why when you read through this, and you can do this on your own time, you'll find Hermes always helping Circe And almost like playing this game where, like, for instance, in the hotels of Odysseus, Odysseus ends up on the Isles of Circe. And then all of a sudden Hermes appears and tells them how to defeat Circe. But why was Hermes on the Isles with uh, Circe anyway? Then on another part, it talks about how Circe, like she was, she liked all of the men, but not Hermes. Because he wasn't a man. He was more of like a dog. And she didn't trust him. <laughs> so even if a sorceress doesn't trust her own collaborator, but then you flip that into the matrix, okay? And you start like basically seeing that are people really trustworthy if they're inside of that id, if they're inside of their microcosmic and they haven't become aware of the macrocosmic? And then they also got, let's say, uh, Cersei kind of vibes around them, jealousy and all this other stuff that you kind of read about in clues. Because really what you're seeing here, and this is how powerful occultism is, is you're seeing the design of the body, i.e. a circle and a pentagram. And then you're seeing the character, Cersei, you know, and all of the trapping people inside of her circle. Having all these animals in this circus having her son the joker or the jester you know doing all of the the entertaining and the trickery and then in the circus is that gypsy you see what i mean so man i'll tell you like hold i mean okay let's stop for a moment 
from a scale to one to ten, you put it into your chat right now. Ten being the high, nine being the high. Scale to one to nine. Let's not even jump into that. Let's scale to one to nine. How much are you comprehending this? Nine being the highest, uh, one being the lowest. So I can basically dial in a little bit more. Like, where are you at with this? You know, because I I need to, to just just to just tap this real quick. And and while you're doing that, just so I can see, I'm glad I'm seeing a three here. Let's bring it down a little bit. So let's let's take a step back. Okay. So I pointed this out before that inside of this crest is a dog, okay? And it begs the question, why a dog? If we have a lion over here, like why not put the lion in the middle? When we go here, we find that Cersei kept herself around lions and dogs. Lions or excuse me, wolves. And this is also, for the ones who put the lower numbers, this also kind of lets you understand a little bit about matrices. Every time a matrix is rebooted, everything gets weaker. So what started as a lion is now a wolf. And I've already showed you the connection between a lion and a wolf by the eyes and how a lion doesn't have cat's eyes. So a lot of people be confused about the cat. I come also here to tell you that once I isolated and, and narrowed down all these facts that I'm going to give you, I'm going to blow it back up here in a moment, but it came down to a black dog and a black cat. And I had to ask myself, just meaning for this segment of, of this era or segment that we're in of the current development of the consciousness, it seems as its primordial etheric measure what has been used to create the man and the woman at this stage is a black dog and a black cat but i'll desist for a minute okay because again maybe you will go and find in your ancestral history that the recent one that it comes back to those two archetypes versus like lions because that's a little further back versus snakes or reptiles, serpents, dragons, because that's a little further back. Because that's why they show in you with Yada Bayo or the mother or, or the, the mother's son, the demiurge, he's a lion. Okay. So he's his mother is a serpent. So one level down, it's a lion. His son is a dog. One level down, it's a jack or excuse me, a wolf. He's a jackal. One level down, his son is a dog. You see what I mean? One level down. This is how these worlds work. But notice how all of these beings are domestic entities versus I believe that the original matrix, mother's matrix, she works through the wild animals. She works through all the non-domesticated animals. And that's the system that the son, if you may, the jackal, is, co is he's copying. But it, remember, that one's more superior so watch how this works. Now, if we're talking about cards here, it's quite odd if you want to really jump in the game and play against Jack. And here's why. Jack happens to take up six cards in the modern deck. So this means that once you start really dialing in to what we're talking about here and how the cards also play out in life and how they can move cards around, eliminate cards, because remember, they basically moved out the king and they bought in the jack, which is uh, slightly, which is above the 10. So you only have the jack and the queen and then you have the ace, but the ace is trumped by the joker. So this is called rigging the game. So let me show you how this is a masculine thing. So first of all, the kid should be off the line at this stage. Okay, I see some kids online. Or, or Let me see. Hold on. I think we got some 18 or over going on here. Okay, so I'm just securing the line. So I'll actually, I'll still keep it G-rated. There is a term that is used by males that begins with Jack. 
to explain their sexual emission. There is also a word that uses master first in order to let you see a little bit about a series of gods, mainly five, who come out with their masculine component in their hand. You've seen this in Egyptian paintings. And in this, they are, and let me show you the terminology because Pierre was breaking this down too, is that they are basically on the deck or the masthead. So in this way, these are the sailors. So let's explain this again. They are seamen. Okay? And as seamen, they have a deck. Right? Because you're on this vessel. The vessel has a mast head, which is the center of the thing going up that is holding the sails. And you're riding on the ocean, which, of course, is the mother. So do you see why a ship always plays the symbol in itself of the jack or the sun or the boat? Excuse me. It's the moon specifically. The boat. On the waters. Okay? So this is a crescent boat on the waters. So let me just rewind here again, just so we understand this. Now, when these cards come out, there's a personality within every card. However, the deck is already stacked. Instead of them going by the 365 or excuse me, 360, there's already been somebody who's rigged and cheated the game in the matrix that you're in. Let me prove it. We will go here and we will type Hermes moon Okay, hold on real quick because I, I let me let me see, let me make sure I just don't have the link. I'm going to show you, according to the Greek mythos, that Hermes gambled with the moon and won 70th, 70th, 70th of its light, okay? Meaning that it literally is showing you, as we're following this narrative, that there's a recording in not only Egyptian times, but also in Greek times of Hermes gambling the moon or ga gambling for the moon's energy. Watch this. Because the thing is, is that when you're gambling in somebody else's house, you need to make sure that the deck is not stacked. And I'm also telling you the way that we win this is we got to beat us by our own rules. <laughs> beat yourself at your own game. Prior to Thoth's gift, and I'm going to break this down here in a moment about how the days get added, right? So prior to Thoth's gift, each of the 12 months of the Egyptian calendar had 30 days resulting in a 360-day year. Huh? Was Thoth's gift a trick? So now you see when they say to trick or treat, they're giving a gift, but it's, a, it's symbolic to give somebody something, but it's part of a trick. And that's what I'm saying about the human body that you got to peep out, though, because if you don't operate the human body properly, you will end up in an animal body. How? Well, I said this years ago. Is it wrong if you've been behaving like a dog or a pig all your life for you not to become one next? Why would it be wrong for you to become what you act like? <laughs> right? However... What if you had been coerced to act like that? Which is really more what's going on, I swear. I'm not faulting none of y'all now. That's why my slate is clean. I'm not the judge. Like, literally, the pressure is high all the time to do something 
that is going to lead to going right down into that root nucleus and into the netherworld. And you know it. Because the anger, they say it boils the blood. So immediately all this stuff just dropped. That's what that feeling is. Everything just dropped. They show you it in the tones when they play in a movie. And they about to take you through one of them crazy. This is what happens with the vibrational frequency as it's entering into that conflict and all that kind of stuff, right? But you can't tell nobody nothing. 